Another day, another really wacky integral, and this one has a pretty fascinating structure. It's the integral from negative to positive infinity of gamma 1 plus ix times gamma 1 minus ix, where i is, of course, the imaginary unit. So how exactly are we going to approach this? Well, first up, we should call the integral i, so we have something to refer to. And immediately we notice that we can apply the recursion formula for the gamma function, which states that gamma 1 plus z equals z times gamma z. So this implies that i can be written as the integral from negative to positive infinity of ix times gamma ix times gamma 1 minus ix. And once again, we can make use of a wonderful property of the gamma function that is Euler's reflection formula. So accordingly, gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equals pi times the cosecant of pi times z. So applying the reflection formula to the structure gives us i being equal to the integral from negative to positive infinity of i times x times pi times the cosecant of pi times ix dx. And of course we can write the cosecant function as the reciprocal of the sine function. So we have the integral from negative to positive infinity of ix times pi divided by the sine of i times pi x dx. And of course we know that the sine of i times z equals i times the sinh of z. So this implies that the integral i is the integral from negative to positive infinity of i times x times pi divided by i times the sinh of pi x. So the i's cancel out quite nicely and you're left with pi times the integral from negative to positive infinity of x dx divided by the sinh of pi x. Okay, cool, but now what exactly? Well, um, we know that the sinh function is defined as, uh, well, sinh z equals e to the z minus e to the negative z divided by 2. So using this definition, we can write i as pi, uh, 2 pi times the integral from negative to positive infinity of x dx divided by e to the pi x minus e to the negative pi x. And this structure over here is pretty useful. It's pretty insightful, in fact, because if you take the function you're integrating, that is x divided by e to the pi x minus e to the negative pi x, and if you replace x by negative x, you get negative x divided by e to the negative pi x minus e to the pi x, which of course equals, if you switch up the order in the denominator, x times e to the pi x minus e to the negative pi x. So the function you're integrating, f of x, equals, its, equals f of negative x. So this implies that the function you're integrating is in fact even. So instead of integrating from uh, negative to positive infinity, we could just integrate from 0 to infinity and double the result. So instead of having a 2 pi term, you now have 4 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of x divided by e to the pi x minus e to the negative pi x dx. So you have a couple of exponential functions in the denominator. One of them has a positive argument and the other has a negative argument. So if we be just a bit clever and expand using e to the negative pi x, and let me just give myself some more writing space here. So if we expand using e to the negative pi x, then we can make use of a infinite series expansion. So we have 4 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to the negative pi x divided by 1 minus e to the negative 2 pi x dx. And we know, of course, that 1 by 1 minus x can be expressed as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1. And in this case, we have e to the negative 2 pi x. And for a positive x, which is pretty much the 
interval of integration, we have its absolute value, which is, of course, pretty much the value of the exponential function here itself, because, you know, it's going to be positive. So we have e to the negative 2 pi x being less than 1. So yes, we can express 1 by 1 minus e to the negative 2 pi x in terms of a series expansion. And we can write this as the sum over k and replacing x by e to the negative 2 pi x we have e to the negative 2 pi kx. So using the series expansion, and let me just pick out a different color to highlight stuff. So this implies that i equals 4 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to the negative pi x times the sum over the non-negative integers k of e to the negative 2 pi kx dx. And because these two terms out here are independent of the k variable with respect to which you're performing the summation, we can just slip them inside the sum operator. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of x times e to the multiplying the two exponentials and factoring out an x from the uh, argument gives us x times pi, that is, e to the negative 2k plus 1 times pi x dx this really fascinating structure but the golden question is of course can we perform the switch up of the integration and the summation operator well that depends on convergence criteria so you have x times this damped exponential factor so yeah there are no problems regarding convergence or boundedness so we can in fact perform the switch up and we can write this as 4 pi times the sum over the non-negative integers k of the integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to negative 2k plus 1 times pi x dx. And next up, I'm going to make use of one of my favorite substitutions that users of the channel are quite familiar with. I'm going to take the argument of the exponential function, that is 2k plus 1 times pi x, and I'm going to set it equal to some other variable t. And this implies that dx equals dt by 2k plus 1 times pi. So this implies that our integral in the t world is in fact 4 pi times the sum over k of uh, the integral from, again, 0 to infinity because the limits of integration are clearly not bothered. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of t divided by 2k plus 1 times pi. Uh, times e to the negative t times the differential element over here, which is dt by 2k plus 1 pi. Okay, cool. So this here equals 4 pi times the sum over the non-negative integers k of the integral from 0 to infinity of um, 1 by 2k plus 1 squared times pi squared times e t to the uh, times t times e to the negative t dt. And because this term here is independent of the t variable with respect to which we're integrating, we can just slip it outside the integration operator, and we have 4 pi times the sum over k of 1 by, or we can just take the pi squared outside the summation operator as well. So we have 4 pi by pi squared. So one of the pi's cancels out, cancels out quite nicely as well. So we have 4 by pi times the sum over k of 2k plus 1 squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of t times e to the negative t dt. Okay, cool. And we recognize this as gamma 2, which is just 1 factorial, which is 1. Okay, nice. So this implies that i equals... 4 by pi times the sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by 2k plus 1 squared. And this sum here is closely related to the famous Basel problem. So we know that the sum over the positive integers n of 1 by n squared equals pi squared by 6. And if you decompose the sum of the squared reciprocals, of the positive integers into sums of odd and even squared integers, then we can write the left-hand side as one sum for the even integers, that is, the sum over 
uh, the positive integers of 1 by 2n squared and the sum over the non-negative integers and I'm starting this sum at n equals 0 because we need to cover the first odd number that is n equals 1 so we can write this as the sum over n of 2n plus 1 squared and this equals pi squared by 6 now you can write this here you can expand the square as 4n squared and you can just take this 4 out of the sum operator. So you have one fourth of the Basel problem. So that here is uh, pi squared by 24. So you have pi squared by 24 plus our target sum s being equal to pi squared by 6. And this here implies that s equals pi squared by 6 minus pi squared by 24. So that's going to be left with 3 pi squared by 24, which is, of course, pi squared by 8. Okay, cool. So this implies that your uh, target integral i equals 4 divided by pi times pi squared by 8. Okay, nice. So one of the pi's cancelled out nicely. You have this cancellation between 4 and 8. So all of this implies that the integral from negative to positive infinity of gamma 1 plus i times x times gamma 1 minus i times x dx equals pi by 2. A surprising result and a pretty awesome solution development. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.